Hello, hello, hello. Today I'm going to give you an easy solution for our easy high school problem. Here is the building, eight meters high. Here is a horizontal road. I'm standing here, ten meters from that building. On the roof of that building, at a distance of five meters from the edge, is my target. And I want to shoot an extremely small but very massive object from here onto the target. We will ignore drag, drag <laughs> air drag of any kind. All of us will use g equals 10 so that to four digit precision we all get the same answers. Okay. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to shoot it off at an angle alpha with a speed v0. The horizontal component of the speed is then v0 cosine alpha, which never changes because there's no acceleration in the x direction. But in the y direction, the speed at t0 is v0 sine alpha but it will change in time. All right. So, let's go back to our high school days and let's look at the standard equations for an object that we throw up in a gravitational field. So x as a function of time is the Speed in the x direction times time. Speed always remains the same. The y position of my small little object. This is the beginning speed. And g is the acceleration. So that gives me this well-known equation. Again, visit your high school days if you have forgotten. So, t is x divided by v0 cosine alpha. I'm going to input for t here, x divided by v0 cosine alpha. So I lose the v0, and the sine alpha becomes tangent alpha. There it is. And here I get 1 half g, minus sine of course, x squared divided by v0 cosine alpha squared. So I no longer have t in here. I only have alpha and I have v0. Now, I do know, and that's important, that when y is 8 here, that x is 10. Right? So I substitute in this equation y equals 8 and x equals 10. 1 half t is 5. T squared is 100, so here you get your 500. And here you get your 10. Very easy. But also, when y is 8, x can also be 15. This is 15. So, again, I substitute x equals 15, x equals 15 in here, and y equals 8. So now I have two equations with two unknowns, alpha and v0. The fastest way, I think, to solve this is to multiply the upstairs equation with 2.25 because the 500 becomes then 1125. And you subtract the two and you get one equation in tangent alpha. Could not be easier. So, look at that result. You get then that 10 equals 7.5 tangent alpha. And that leads to a value of alpha of 53.130 degrees. So that is when it just is at the edge of that roof. We can calculate now what the speed is. We go back to this equation. You know alpha. And so you immediately find what V0 is. You can also use this equation, but this one is fine. 
you find that number. And once you know V0 and you know alpha, you go back to this equation if you want to, and you will find what T is. Because x equals 15, that's when the object hits target, and so you can now solve for t. And what you find is that t is 1.5492 seconds. But that would mean then that it actually right at that edge. So if you want to be a little bit on the conservative side, I would say should it a trifle higher, maybe at 53.15 degrees, then you can be pretty sure that it will clear the edge of the roof, assuming, of course, that the object is extremely small. And so the answer that I prefer is 1.550 seconds, but this, of course, is fine. If you have 1.549, then you indicate that you understand the complete physics, of course. I would like to show you various trajectories for very difficult, different angles. If I want to go from, this is on to scale, by the way, this is 10, this is 8, and this is 5. So if I shoot it up at an angle of 70 degrees, this will take a long time, much longer than the 1.550 seconds. And at 60 degrees, it will go a little faster, of course, takes less time. 45 degrees, the parabola will straight go through this point, but of course, that's not valid because you would hit the wall. So you have to clear this point. So I've drawn here the green line, which is the 53 point something. And you see, beautiful, how it hits here. Okay, it wasn't very difficult, was it? There are different ways you can solve it. There are very time-consuming ways that you can solve it. I chose this way because I think this probably is among the fastest, maybe even the fastest. But some of you are smarter than I am, so maybe you can come up with a shorter, shorter solution. We'll be friends for sure. Have a nice day and take care and make sure you use the g equals 10. You have to use g equals 10.